Hi guys and girls. Built a small block Chevrolet here. Figure some of you guys out there on the internet might want to see what we're doing here. Got a Holly Sniper EFI system going on in this small block Chevrolet. 60 over flat top, big cam. Makes a lot of cool noises. Uh, we had a Holly 650 double pump on here and not the best carburetor, guys. So we're going to try and go over to the EFI game, get her running, get some reliability out of it. End goal is to try and go to a Cletus and Cars and blow tires off the back of this thing eventually. We got to get her there. If you guys want to go along for the ride and see what we're doing, I got a couple other cars we can do some custom work on. Uh, it'll be on the channel. This is going to be my first upload to YouTube. Uh, we filmed some of the work yesterday. I just forgot to do the intro. Don't know what I'm doing yet. But we'll figure it out. If you'll stick with me through my awkward phase of learning how to do the editing, I'll try to make some good content in the future and see if we can't have a good time on here and do some fun stuff. Stick around to the end. So what we got going on here is I got some red and black, just basic, nothing too fancy. You got a switch panel. Uh, my ignition is going to time, it's going to power the sniper. Uh, the sniper in the instruction says that there's a two and a half second delay from the time it's energized from the time that it actually starts working. So if you don't switch it on before you just start cranking, like if you switch it to keyed power and you just go straight to starting, there's a chance it'll have a hard a hard time starting for approximately two and a half seconds because it's not pumping fuel, it's not telling anything to, it's not telling injectors to fire, it's doing nothing. So I'm gonna have this set so that the key still controls accessories, lights, locks the steering wheel. And I'm gonna have this set up for like sniper, electric fans and so on. And then uh, my crank is most likely gonna be controlled with the button and that way I can crank with the sniper off if I'm trying to do a compression test or whatever else I want to do with the engine. But uh, that's pretty much what this all is going to do. The key's not going to do much other than turn on and off the base wiring for lighting and steering wheel. The radio in this truck. So I'm going to put the switch panel in the hole that the radio came out of. I'm going to put a piece of aluminum in here to, to create a backer so that I can put this in this hole. And that's where everything will be operated from. That's about it. The only thing left to do is start running wires. It's all positives and negatives, one piece at a time, man. Put this. Right. Got some goodies. I don't know if I need much of that or if any of that. I'm not running a lot of the extra stuff that the sniper wants. These snipers will do a lot of electronic ignition things that I'm not going to use, so I don't need them. That's for my tablet. Yeah, like this. This is for if you go with like an electronic style distributor, uh, so that the sniper can do timing things and electronic magic. I'm not using it. I'm just using a basic HEI. So all it needs is switched power. And that's literally it. And then I have a spark, it's, it's all self-contained. And then the only other wire that comes out of an HEI is a tack signal, so that if I wanna use a tachometer, or if I wanna use the tachometer sensor for my sniper, you just hook in a different wire into the, the tack signal on the back of your HEI. It's, it's all labeled BAT for battery and TAC for tack or TA. No, it's been a while since I looked at one. And then I gotta put these in at some point. Your sniper's gonna come with a bong for a O2 sensor. This one's like a clamp-on style. I usually use these temporarily just to try to get it going, make sure where I have it is gonna work. And uh, if I like it, you gotta drill a hole for this. I can get a bung later and then weld the bung in permanently. Or if I hate it, I can patch over it and weld the hole back in if I don't like where it's at or it's not working or it's in the way. So is that a bung or is that an O2 sensor? This is the bung. And what's a bung do? Uh, you just, it's got a hole in it and some threads. And the way these work is it's a, it's a clamp-on style. So it's got a gasket that goes underneath this plate. And then you put these clamps that aren't big enough for my exhaust. Two and a half or something. But you run these clamps around this plate. 
and it straps it to your exhaust. It's, it's basically a no weld system for the Holly Sniper kits. Uh, basically for the average DIY guy that doesn't own a welder maybe, that's just trying to upgrade his hot rod. But this isn't quite big enough for what I'm gonna do because my exhaust opening is three and a half inches. So that ain't big enough. I won't be using that, but I will be using the four wire. I believe this is a four wire. It's a wide band style O2 sensor. It's gonna tell this sniper everything. So these are good to have. Comes with a kit, comes with a plug for it. So all you gotta do is run that wire down, run it in the exhaust, weld your bung on there, or use the clamp on style, and then you're good to go. You got no two sensors, very simple. And if your vehicle already it was like a TBI or something, and it already had an O2 sensor location, you just unscrew your old one, screw this one in that hole, plug it in and run it. It's pretty simple, it's not that, it's not very complicated. Holly Make does a really good job of simplifying the process. It's a very simple kit to install. And then you get your, your tablet. This is what tells the sniper. This is how you program it, what you got, uh, how many cubic inches, what kind of cam you got, whether you're running gasoline or ethanol. Uh, the snipers are compatible with E85. Uh, it's going to ask you during your setup whether you're running pump gas or E85. You can choose between the two. Um, it's not a flex fuel type thing. It doesn't have any type of fuel sensor or anything like that. You have to run one or the other. I'm sure if you switch back and forth, you can go into the setup, into the wizard, and uh, tell it that you're changing fuels, and it'll self-learn a new map. Uh, but you are going to have a learn period between that fuel switch. Um, this motor is pump gas friendly. Uh, I think it's like 10 something to 1, which is on the edge of not really being pump gas friendly. Um, but I don't have a reason to run it on ethanol right now, other than the fact that it's cheaper, but so be it. I'm going to run pump gas. It's easier to get. You can get it everywhere. Not every gas station sells ethanol. Um, so yeah, this is a basic location of where I think it's going to work in my vehicle. Everywhere else is kind of far and out of reach. I've got heater controls here, which do nothing at this point, but they're there. And then I've got this nice panel right here that has no switches in it. So I should be able to use these little glue pads to stick it on. Or what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this handheld out and I'm going to put some very small headed screws in here that it will fit and I'm just going to screw it right into this plastic dash. It's not going to hurt my feelings. It might hurt someone else's, but it is what it is. I don't want double sided tape or whatever this is in this little stick on kit to come off while I'm driving. So it's just going to be permanent. Um, and if I ever decide to change that, you can actually take this bezel piece out and replace it. They're not that hard to find. So if I change my mind later, I'll fix it later. And it won't affect anything to do with those lights, will it? No, this has its own plug and everything coming out the back of it. There should be basically nothing behind this. Um, so we can, we'll pop it out eventually and we'll make sure there's nothing behind it before I start drilling holes. But they shouldn't be. Uh, but it's a good space. It's, it's within my view while driving. I don't have to reach for it or look for it. It's right off the windshield, so I'm going to run that. They also make mounts for these snipers that you can suction cup to the windshield or, or put it on the dash. But I don't really want a bunch of stuff hanging off the dash because it kind of looks flashy. I don't like it. You know, a lot of guys, they'll program their sniper and put this in their glove box. Especially if you have all your gauges functioning, you don't need this. Uh, it does have more accurate gauges on it, you know, especially if you do like the electronic uh, oil pressure sender and stuff like that, which I don't know if this sniper is capable of running an electronic oil pressure uh, sensor. Um, but like the dominators and stuff, they, they do have wiring provisions to run those sensors. Um, I'm just going to run a mechanical off of this motor. Uh, it does have an electronic style gauge, so if I can find the wires easily without having to break my back looking for them, I'll try to put an electronic sender back on this 350 
which should still be hanging off the 4.3 I've got in the garage. So if I can steal that sensor off the 4.3 and thread it into the 350, then by all means, I'll have the gauge on the dash working. If it proves to be a pain or difficult, and I don't feel like it, I'll just put a mechanical gauge in it. Don't bother me. I've got one sitting in there, brand new in the package. So I'll just put it on there, hard wire it with, or hard line it with the copper lines. Let's run mechanicals. Uh, I don't need to run a water temp gauge because the sniper does water temp. Um, that's about it. This will have a tack signal on it, uh, so it'll show me RPM, water temp. It'll show me my AFRs. It does all kinds of cool stuff, to be honest. Um, it's all in the booklet, in the handheld of what you got. And uh, Holly makes it a, a really easy to install these two. They label all the wires, there's colors on them, so it tells you what wire goes to what, where, how to wire in the fuel system, how to wire in everything. Super easy. Uh, so if somebody, if you're a kind of guy that's got a carbureted vehicle and you're not the best carburetor guy and you've got an extra 800 bucks, 1,000 bucks, I definitely recommend one of these kits. Super easy to use, they come in, uh, polished black and then like a matte gold color so they got some options out there super easy you wire it in basic um, if you have a mechanical fuel system instead of an electronic you can still run your block mechanical pump and you can run what's called a surge tank a bunch of different companies make surge tanks it's basically like a gallon and a half tank that you put under the hood or wherever you want it uh, with a high pressure pump in it and that's where you would run your sniper's electric tube for your fuel pump. So the mechanical pump fills the surge tank. The surge tank has a high pressure send and return. So it will feed fuel to your sniper and then return back to that tank. It's all self-contained, super easy to install. It takes like three or four screws, find a location for it, run it in, super simple. And then you, you bypass all of your issues of trying to put an inline pump in or do anything else you have to you don't have to modify your fuel fuel system at all you literally just unplug your fuel send to your carburetor run it to the surge tank and then plumb the surge tank into your car super easy and then it's all self-sustained because the sniper turns it on and off you don't have to have switches for it nothing unless you want to do an inline fuel pump yeah it's easy nothing nothing no rocket science no magic just a to b wiring so anybody can learn it, basically. Yeah, super simple. Anybody that can read, heck, if you if you're one of them fellas that ain't the best at reading, you know, it's it's got pictures. It tells you how to set it up, how to set your motor up, tell it what's in it. It tells you that what wires need to go positive and negative. It gives you the basic of using an HEI versus an external coil. I mean, it does everything. It tells you how to run it. Tells you about your display and how to plug it in. Super simple kit. Here's your O2 sensor, that clamp on style I was talking about. Tells you what angles you want to put your O2 sensor in so that it's not incorrect. Because uh, if you go too low and condensation sits on top of your sensor, it'll actually ruin the sensor. So you want to make sure you follow these directions and go somewhere off of one of these angles. But yeah, it, it's, a, it's a simple kit. Anybody can put one of these in. It's nothing special. I'm not a rocket scientist because I can put one in because anybody can do it. What I was saying is when I add my O2 sensor to this pipe because there is no exhaust on this truck. So adding a sniper is slightly challenging because of what I have to work with from here to here. That O2 sensor is going to get raw air when you're driving and it will cause it to think that the engine is lean and it will start throwing fuel at it. So I'm going to have to extend this, whether I extend it with a bullet muffler, which ain't going to do much because of what I got, or just extending it with like a like a turn down or a bullhorn or whatever you want to call it, to at least get it out here a little bit so that this, the O2 sensor can be bathed in exhaust fumes instead of being bathed in raw air. I don't really want it dumping a bunch of fuel into my engine. And running rich is just about as bad as running lean. It washes all the oil film off your cylinder walls, messes your rings up in the long run messes up your cylinder walls because you're running with no lube. It's, it's a bad deal. You don't want you don't want rich. You don't want a lot of hot rod guys think that they always call it fat and happy. They'll run them a little on the rich side. It's not really that good for them. Um, you're putting all that fuel in there. Some of that fuel washes down the cylinder and gets into your oil, thins your oil out. Uh, if you've ever had 
some guys know what I'm talking about, they're gonna watch this. If you've ever had a hot rod that runs real rich and you drain the oil, it's it's got no viscosity left to it. It smells like gas. Well, that's because your gas is going down your cylinders and into your bottom end. Uh, there's a lot of old school guys back in the day, you used to be able to put flamethrower kits on your exhaust. The way some of them work is it's got a jet that sprays some type of ignitable substance into the exhaust and it lights it and blows it out. You don't stall the engine. Some of those kits work that when you push the button down, it grounds out your coil. You lose spark. So what you do is you rev it up, push the button, it kills the spark, and you just sit there and stomp the gas. It pumps gas into your exhaust and then ignites that. Um, it's terrible because you're running just dead straight rich with no fire or nothing except for the fire and the, and the exhaust itself. Looks cool. Terrible for a moment. Um, I'm not going to be doing that. You should have plenty of flames coming out of it, you know, on its own. So, yeah, I can do that. <laughs> it's also bad for O2 senses to do that, having all that raw fuel wash up on them and then lighting it and doing whatever you do. I ain't doing that. Uh, I've got a three core radiator in the box with two electric fans. Um, kind of debating, you know. Whether it's up to the viewer or me or however many viewers I get, uh, I may run this kind of rat rod style, no front fenders. Um, what I've done in the past on like Suzuki sidekicks and crap that I didn't care about is I'll take a piece of metal and go from one of these holes up front that my fender used to bolt to to keep my core support rigid. And I'll just run a piece of metal from here back to the cab to put some rigidity back into my core support. I don't care to run it without fenders, to be honest. Um, it may be a temporary solution until I buy fenders, because, well, number one, I don't know how much they cost yet. Number two, I don't know if I'm gonna order them. So, it may happen that way. It may be kind of rat rod looking. It may just have a support that runs back to hold my firewall where it needs to be, and I may extend this harness so that I can bring it up to that metal and just run it like that. I don't know. Depends on how wild we get. So let us know in the comments below, right? Pretty much. If, if it's something that you guys like and you want to like and subscribe, leave me a comment. And tell me what you think about it. Or if you think I'm an absolute hack and you want to tell me how stupid I am, that's fine. You can tell me. I'm not going to get too mad about it. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, it's there's all kinds of things. I got all the brakes disconnected right now. It's going to get a brand new fuel system. Sorry. It's going to get a brand new brake system on it. Uh, I'd like to run most likely stainless all the way back on it. I'm going to get a manual uh, brake master on it because with my setup here, I don't have any room for the vacuum uh, brake booster setup. It, it, my, my master cylinder is literally right here on top of this exhaust runner. So I got to get rid of that, which will push all this back against the firewall. I can put a mechanical master on it and then get rid of all the ABS stuff that's never going to do anything again anyways. So. And it's already had brake lines patched on it. It's got copper lines under it, which there's nothing wrong with copper lines. It's just, I'd rather have a solid continuous line, whether it's stainless or epoxy coated, whatever, I don't care. Just, I don't want unions and compression fittings if I'm gonna drive this thing as fast as it's capable of going. So I'd rather fix it the right way and, you know, delete all of those unsafe options, you know. I've used unions on my daily drivers, but I don't drive my daily drivers over 100, so that's okay. Uh, there may be a rear gear change in this. I don't know. It's I don't know if I said at the beginning of this. It's it's a 350. It's a 60 over flat top, aluminum heads. It's got the air gap intake on it. <clears throat> it's got a uh, comp cam with big mother thumper in it. Uh, springs to match. The heads have stainless valves in them. 202 160s. Uh, they're basically a Brodix knockoff from China. Got them on Amazon, super cheap. They work pretty good. This motor makes decent power. Uh, I had it in full size, single cab short bed C10, and it, it throw that truck around pretty good. So I'm expecting it to perform pretty well, especially since I'm upgrading to the Sniper EFI. Should have plenty of response. And be a lot better than it was on my terrible carburetor tuning job. Um, so it's it's pretty much it. It's a, it's a basic stock stroke 30 over or 60 over flat top 350. That's all it is. I've got a 383 stroker. 
I got a couple of options of what we can put it in. I've actually got two 383 strokers. Uh, there's one that's for this truck we built not too long ago. It's also got aluminum heads on it, flat top pistons. Uh, I think they're Hyper Eutectics. It's a good bottom. It's it's a good bottom end. It could handle a little bit of nitrous if we wanted to get crazy with it. Um, I've also got a dual quad tunnel ram that's drilled and ported for direct port nitrous injection. So, you know, if this truck takes off and you guys like it, and who knows, we might throw a big intake on it. Sniper makes a kit where you can put two of these in the series with each other. Um, so you can have two snipers and I can put that on top of that dual quad setup. Um, so we can go as crazy as we want to if this thing becomes a hit and you guys like it, we can do some weird stuff to it. Um, I've got the other square body behind it. It's in 1981 C20. Uh, being two wheel drive, I'm debating on lowering it. Yeah, it's got a 454 big block Chevrolet in it, 400 turbo tranny. Um, it rides decent. I uh, debated on lifting it, but nobody really lifts two wheel drive trucks. Some people do, I'm not going to. Um, if it had four wheel drive, then it, that would absolutely be in the book of throwing a lift kit on it. Six, eight inches, 12 inches, 40s, 42s, whatever. Uh, it's got 35s on it right now, and when I lower it, it's not going to clear, so I'm probably going to step it back down to like a 33. So it's it's out there. You know, if you guys give me some feedback and you're interested in seeing me work on that, then by all means, we'll, we'll tool around on it, see what happens. Um, if you guys hate me, then you know, maybe we won't. <laughs> but we'll see how it goes. Um, new to youtube it's gonna be my first upload figured i'd try it out i'm always out here tinkering on something or messing around doing some backyard sloppy mechanic crap um i watch a lot of youtubers and kind of got motivated that i've got free time i've got a couple of hot rods laying around so i might as well make a couple videos and see if you guys enjoy it and if you want to be along for the ride and see where it goes Just and if you don't like it tell him in the comments and he'll tell him what you want to see I'll make it happen if, if you guys want to see more continuous footage of me constantly wrenching let me know if you want to see shortened versions of what we're going to upload you know maybe like some shorts or something we can throw some shorts out there you know a couple clips of it running you know when we get all this stuff buttoned up get the radiator put in it uh, if you want to see a, a first drive video where we take it around the block put some miles on it you know, just tell me what you want to see and i'll do my best to see if i can produce it for you and see where it goes from there <clears throat> i'm all about you know seeing where youtube can take me i've seen a lot of guys have success with youtube um so if i can make something out of it it'd be great see what happens with it but i do plan on at some point getting this to the point where i can go to a cletus and cars open event that is, that is the end goal with this motor is to test it run it see how durable it is see if it'll hang in there with like a one two minute burnout see if it'll blow tires off of it uh, i've got a track bar set coming up to try and eliminate some axle wrap these uh, these older s10s well most s10s in general are, are pretty known for axle wrap tire hop it's terrible brake stuff so i'm trying to make that not happen anymore um but i'd love to go to a cletus and cars event you know do a big nasty burnout have a good time uh, it's kind of the end goal with this the, the square body, not really. It's it's something I enjoy. I want to daily it. I want to get it to where I can pull a trailer if I want to or or do anything like that. Uh, right now, Whoa. I'm taking the exciter wire off the side of the starter, the, wrench. the small wire. Finger wrench. It's, it's finger tight. Where is it? What do you mean, what wrench? What wrench and where? I don't need a wrench. I said finger wrench. I, it's, it, was, oh. it was finger tight. I got it. It's loose. But See, guys, I'm stupid. On a, on a GM, well, at least this GM, this purple wire that's been chewed on by a couple of squirrels or something, which is fine because I'm, I'm going to cut it up here somewhere. It's got plenty of reach for me. This is your keyed exciter wire. This is your crank signal from the key. Um, so I'm going to install this and a secondary wire for the push button. Um, reason being is if I want, like I said before, if I want to crank this engine over, compression test, whatever I want to do, maybe I'm doing a check in my valve lash or whatever else, I can push the push button or have him push the push button or any friend that's with me to rotate the motor without any spark or anything. Or um, if I get in the car and I've got the sniper on for whatever reason and 
somebody just jumps in the car and cranks the key for me, they can crank the key and it'll still turn the truck on. It'll be dual purpose, it'll do both. I've just got to run it down here, terminate it, put an eyelid on it, and uh, it should do what I want it to do. As I stated before, all these wires are going to go away. It all went to heater controls and air conditioning and everything else that I'm not going to use anymore. So I just whacked them off kind of over here out the way. And the next month or so, when I finally start organizing, these will all get depinned and removed from the truck permanently. Also, for some of you guys, on these S10s, the lower mount uh, is solid mount on an S10. The upper mount is what has your, your bushing or your isolator in it. Um, so on these S10 swaps, you can get the V8 conversion engine mounts and it's wider than the base mount. So what I'm gonna do with that is I haven't finalized the location of this motor. I've got about three quarters of an inch forward and backward that I can move it. Right now it's full forward. Um, if I get too close to one of my electronic fans on my radiator, I've got three quarters of an inch, I can bring it back. And I've also got a shorter water pump I can put on this motor to get me like another inch, I think. Uh, you've got a long and a short water pump for these, whether it's a car or a truck. Uh, so I've got about an inch and three quarter, basically a wiggle room between that and this. Now what I'm gonna do at that point is I'm gonna take the weight of the motor off of these bolts and I'm gonna put a shim or a spacer on either side to take up the space before I put the bolt in finally and, and torque it before we start driving this thing. But that's pretty much it. I got a Jags mini, mini high torque starter in here. Works pretty good. I use a lot of Jags products. It's simple. You make a phone call and it shows up. Simplicity is what I like. It looks like it was leaking. I don't know what that goes to. Huh? Nothing. It goes to nothing. It's Bluetooth. It's Bluetooth. Yeah, it's Bluetooth. That's actually something that they would probably make now. I don't think that we are to the point in history that we can make Bluetooth electronic connection. <laughs> If they did, it'd be great. I just dropped the battery on the back of the truck and turned the key. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, these are the, for the sniper, this is your permanent battery, not switched battery, permanent battery, positive and negative. And this heavy blue is fuel pump. This is what needs to go back and get spliced in. I kind of just had them laying in here for the moment. It's time to drop them down and start running them back, see where they're gonna go. Um, I did make the decision, kind of off camera, kind of on camera. Um, I'm not putting the battery here. I have the bracket to do it. It's too close to my pipes, don't like it. Uh, so this is gonna be my electronics. And then I'm gonna run everything to the battery in the back. Uh, I found a battery relocation kit from JEGS that comes with a battery box and all the wiring you need to extend your battery all the way to the back of the truck. So I'm gonna put it back on the bulkhead of the bed. <clears throat> Which means I've gotta run these wires underneath the truck, down the frame, and up into the bed. So we're gonna start on that. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna run that up over the transmission, bring her back. Okay, and if everything happens bad? Fine. Hi. Okay. 50-50. I'm fine with either one. Well, it moved. I'm not doing anything to it yet, sir. Am I at a safe distance? Yeah, probably. Okay. If it catches fire, it's going to be the thumbnail. It's going to be a good thumbnail. I like the thumbnail of the sniper. Sniper. One and done. Thank you. Yep. 
Some of these wires go to the brake lights, and some don't. I don't know. Okay, yellow, green, and black definitely go to the back. So, if there's going to be a fire, where is it going to be? Yeah, probably in my face. <laughs> okay. Which one of these goes to what? Yeah, I should probably Google this. <laughs> ah, fuck. <laughs> I'm a hack mechanic, dog. I mean, I'll, I'll do some things, but when it starts getting around the gas thing, I start getting nervous. <laughs> Alright, Thing. It's too lazy to do it right now. I'll probably do the wrong thing and forget about half of them. And when I turn the key for the first time, it's just gonna spark and blow fuses and everything else. It's already covered in gasoline. Pretty much. Oh, it has an electronic speedometer. <clears throat> Since I got rid of the body control module and the PCM and all that crap, it no longer has a speedometer. But Jags makes a uh, GPS speedometer. I'm gonna pick up, pick one of those up so I have a speedo. So now we got electricals. Uh, these three plugs left the other main plug okay so here's my yellow here's my braided which I'm not using I don't remember what this pink one is but it's labeled so let's read it it's not labeled so I can't read it I'll figure it out later this one goes to Texans signal which is going into the truck no it ain't this is my hot wire for ignition. This needs to go into the truck. All right, chunder. I'm gonna lose that. This one needs to pull back over here into the rat's nest that I'm creating. And it needs to go to my coil wire. Which, if I'm correct, I should be able to go snag the correct plug off of another distributor that I have. Should be able to wire up. Maybe. Probably not. Don't know. It does not have the wire in it. Okay. And that one doesn't have the wire in it. There's 10 distributors. I'm sure if I looked around long enough, I'd find the one that has the wire in it. What you can do, oh, those are all rings. You're going to tell me that I don't have a single. Dang, got him. Almost had him. Got him. Do here. Hang on to this guy. And then this box. One of these boxes. That's just bare me. This box. I've got the coolest tool I've ever bought. Well, it's cool to me. It's a wire stripper. Great. 
I'm just doing this the old school way. Hold that camera, man. You just get your wire in here, each under, and you just... Got too much friction with these little wires. I started it. I should be able to. I got it set up for big wires. It's got a little bit too much pressure on it. But those wire strippers, if you set them up for little wires, you literally just squeeze the handle and it does the whole procedure for you. It cuts the casing and then peels it off. That's by squeezing the handle. Pretty cool. Fight with me. Grateful. No more. This wire was a little loose in my socket, so I did a trick that some people do appreciate, some people don't. If your case is a little bit big, you can fold the copper over the case and increase the diameter and then when you crimp it, it it's just as good some people don't like that some people think it's hack so it works for me and plus i don't have the little red ones i just have the blue ones so they were nice crimp should have plenty of connection for what we're doing it's just a tech signal and on an hei you just find the spade that's in there and push up. Now I have tech signal for the sniper. Can you grab me the instruction manual for the sniper so I can figure out what this pink wire does and if I need it or not? This pink wire is switched ignition 12 volts. Must remain powered during cranking. So pink is going to go into the cab and hook up to one of my switches. This is the wire that activates and deactivates the sniper. I didn't have that illustrated in the picture, so I actually had to try and read for the first time. It's difficult, it's harder than it looks. So that's the most important wire. Hmm? That's the most important one, right? Because it's gotta power the thing, right? Uh, well, if I don't hook that up to the switch, the sniper will never come on. See, that's kind of important. <laughs> Equally important as all the rest of them. And that one doesn't have a picture. Yep. Hmm. Yeah, I learned how to read a couple years back. Still kind of rusty at it. All right, I'm gonna put the battery tray. Got this heavy-duty battery tray off of Amazon. It's cheap. And it fits a group size 78, which is what I decided to use. And I'm gonna mount it in the middle of my bulkhead here. And uh, that's how I'm gonna run the battery too, so that I don't have any heat issues up front. And for anybody that's watching that wonders, uh, I have hinges on the side of the bed cap. Um, I was gonna run a fuel cell, so I did this so that I could have access to it. And I decided to use a factory tank and factory pump. So now I just have a hard top that opens from the back like it's supposed to, and it opens from the side, so you can put stuff in it and get it out easy. But we'll cut it when I'm sticking a battery in this thing and we'll do some wiring and see if we can't finalize a couple of connections. Snatch this go handle off of here. He's <coughs> on a different battery. And then you can drop this big piece of steel and you can shoot out your battery and make a light show. That's a good time. It's probably a 9 16 it's a 916. Can you please grab me a 916? All right, now we just gotta. Well, we gotta figure out which one's positive and negative because the plus and minus is covered up by the bracket, so that's a great, great thing. So, what happens if you fuck it up? Will it explode? Mm, car catches on fire. Negative is on the right. For what it's for. Right, we got that done. I'm gonna have to wait on battery cables. That's the only thing I'm gonna have to wait on. I don't have those yet. But we can do fuel lines next. Okay, so um, 
What's the next step? The next step is to put these female adapters on my AN lines. I forget what company I got these from. Uh, oh wait, it's uh, Evil Energy. Evil Energy made these. We're turning this situation. Uh, so which one's fuel send? The larger one. In most applications, the larger one's gonna be send. Sometimes they're the same size on some of these foreign deals, but uh, these are your original fuel wires or fuel hoses. Sorry, why did I say wires? Idiot. But your larger one is gonna be fuel from the pump. So what I'm gonna do is try to locate it like factory where it's gonna come up the front of the block. I'll figure out some type of bracket to keep it from flopping around up here. I got a power steering pump bracket that's gonna go down here too. So this is gonna come over to my, actually my sniper feed is here. It's nice. I love this little tube cutter. It's way better than the one that comes in the set. Which makes no sense because it's a Matco set, well, a blue point, which is like really expensive. But this is like a little imperial tubing cutter and it works way better than the one that came in the blue. Okay. Even out. Put my nipple cover on it. Feels flush enough to do what we're doing, so I'm just gonna send it. It's just a fuel line. What's the worst that could happen? My car burns down in the middle of traffic. That's never happened before. <laughs> Not to me, but I'm sure it's happened. We'll know that Isuzu burst into flames. Yep, driving it home. Okay, tight enough. I'm put this on here. We're going to bubble flare it. So what's a bubble flare do? Uh, a bubble flare is technically a, like a brake fitting, pretty much. Yeah, it's this little anvil here that this press is about to push down. It's kind of got a... It's got a little dish to it. And what's going to happen when I start pressing it is it's going to crush the end of the line and create a little bubble. And that way when I put my rubber hose on it, it's not just smooth and just the fuel pressure pushes it off and just blows out all over the place. All it needs is a little hump. It doesn't need anything extreme. Just, just enough. Way too much. You know what? It's good enough for me. It's not, it's not that hard to finish the job, you know what I'm saying? Okay, so what are you doing now? Uh, before I forget, I'm going to put one of these here clamps on it. A worm screw clamp. Which is... Not correct for what I'm doing. I should be using like a fuel injection style clamp, which is like solid all the way around and doesn't pinch the line and has benefits. I only got those right now, so easy. It's good enough. Just go over top of that. You see how you can see the lump through the hose? Mm -hmm. That'll give it a, once the clamp is tight on the hose, it won't be able to slip over it. If it was just smooth, there's a, there's a chance that it'll slip off the end of your, your fuel line. And then bad things happen. Yeah, just, you know, yeah. 40 some PSI fuel pressure just starts spraying out into your engine bay. Can't say that I've ever been there or done that, but I'm, I'm sure it's exciting.
Yeah. I've, I've had one vehicle burst into flames while driving at home. I went and bought it. It had brakes and didn't have a fuel leak. I got about two blocks from his house. Every brake line on the thing exploded. And I decided to just keep going because, you know, why not? So, I'm about 40 minutes from the house, right? So, we just keep on rolling. And we get about 10 minutes from the house. And it just lets loose, dude, because the exhaust was right next to the fuel line. And it's, and it's rubber. So, while the exhaust is backfiring, you got a knife on you? Well, the exhaust is backfiring and shooting flames and doing its thing. I got one. It, uh, melted through the fuel line and then it sprayed gasoline all over the exhaust that was spitting fire and everything like that so I'm rolling down a hill doing like 35 40 mile an hour with no brakes and uh, I'm Jake breaking this truck that's igniting all the fuel just rolling down the hill on fire <laughs> it was a good time okay so this go right on here like this and now we have fuel into the sniper. I'm gonna have to wrap this in insulation to protect it from the heat from the intake. Now, this is a return line. This one isn't under as much pressure. It's literally just a flow of fuel going back to the tank. No restrictions, no filters. I feel safe enough on my vehicle. I'm just gonna put it straight on the smooth line and connect it. You know, if it was a customer's car, it'd be a little different. This is mine. So I'll do as I wish. So what do you do for, say, a customer's car? Well, I mean, if, if this was a legitimate shop and I was doing it for someone that was paying me money, um, number one, I wouldn't be doing it this way. Number two, I'd, uh, there's fittings and stuff you can buy that are a lot more permanent than what I'm putting on here. This is, this is for me as a hobby and if I get a little fuel leak here and there, I'll fix it later. For now, to get it started and running and driving again, because it had a uh, 650 Holly on it, and it ran good. But I'm, I'm not the best carburetor guy in the world. There's, there's guys that are way, way better at carburetors than I am. So I got it close enough, it ran decent, drove it, but it was never, great so this gets rid of all the things i don't know how to do which is dialing in a carburetor because this is all self-learning and self-tuning so all you have to do is drive it at operating temperature which is above 160 in the in the sniper book and once it reaches 160 your operating temp the handheld switches to learning it'll say it right on your handheld and from that point forward, it is learning and self-programming to run your motor. It's, it's changing fuel tables, and it's doing all kinds of different stuff. This system isn't doing anything with timing, but Holly does have systems that will advance and retard your timing. Which is pretty neat. It's a really cool system. But... For this motor and what I'm going to do with it, and the price point of that system, it is way overkill for what I'm going to do with this truck. You know, if I was going to go to the strip and try to get some some ETs and you know really push the limits of it, then yeah, that'd be a cool system. But for for hopping around doing burnouts and making loud noises, this system is way more than I really need, anyways. Still at that point, I mean it's way more advanced than what I was working with. But I've got a couple of jet kits and stuff, a couple different size jets for Holly carburetor. It was a 650 mechanical secondary double pump with a mechanical choke that was wired open, it was basically raced out. But it was a good carburetor. I got it from uh, Chris's Carb Shop, Dayton, Ohio. He's a good guy. If you're if you're local to that area and you need a carburetor or you got any carburetor questions, he's the guy. 
super knowledgeable. But when I took that carburetor off of this motor, I put it on the, the big block that's in the square body. All right. Good enough for who it's for, right, Chunder? Don't, don't forget that one. Don't forget that one. Yeah, I'll do that. Yeah, the machinist that actually did the machine work on this bottom end is retired now. He's a, he's a really cool guy. Old school guy, Mopar. I like his Mopars. But. Easy. Okay. So those are there. We'll deal with fastening those up, but the fuel system is plumbed, just needs finalized. Alright. On to the next one. So, unfortunately we won't get to hear it running in this one. We've got to order a couple more parts, and then uh, as soon as we get all the cables and everything to run the electronics in this, uh, from the battery to the starter, and then battery to the switches. We'll be able to hear it running in the next video. So if you guys liked what I had to say and if you guys want to see more please like and subscribe and visit me on the next one where we'll be able to hear it run maybe even drive it so if you guys want to be a part of going around the block in this maybe warming up the tires out in Mexico somewhere you know you know where to find me thanks for watching hit that little bell too to keep notified absolutely if you guys want to hear when the next one's coming out hit the bell whenever we release content hopefully I'll get better at filming it make it easier for you guys and more fun to watch Hit us on the next one, please. Thank you.